Today we have Didem um, talking to us about diagnostic tools for communication pathologies and parallel architectures. Um, Didem is currently a faculty member at Koch University and the director of the Parallel and Multicore Computing Laboratory. She's the first researcher from Turkey to receive ERC funding from the European Research Council in the field of computer science for her project Beyond More for the 2021 to 26 period. She's currently acting as the project coordinator of the 2.6 million euro HPC partner project. Um, she was named Emerging Woman Leader in Technical Computing by ACM SIG HPC in 2021, the first recipient of this award outside of the United States. Uh, she's known for her work on programming models, performance tools, and system software for emerging parallel architectures. She received her PhD degree from the University of California in San Diego, and later the Lewis Alvarez Fellowship in 2012 from Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. Later, she received the Marie Career, uh, Marie Curie <laughs> Individual Fellowship from the European Commission in 2015, the BAGEP Award from the Turkish Academy of Sciences in 2019, and the British Royal Newton Advanced Fellowship in 2020. So a very decorated speaker here. Um, and we're glad. That <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Please take it away, Didem. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the nice introduction. Um, so I'll be talking about some, oh, that's my cat, um, some uh, performance tools that we developed recently in our lab. Um, and I will also briefly talk about other projects that we are doing at the beginning. Um, we are not, uh, you know, we haven't published anything in those projects. That's why I wanted to keep them maybe next year, next time if I talk, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be talking uh, about other projects we do. Okay, um, so this is my research group. Um, we have, um, you know, two postdocs, two PhD students, and seven um, master's students in my group at the moment. They are from all different places, uh, all different countries, uh, but mostly nearby countries uh, around around Turkey. Um, okay, so research area. Um, I focus on uh, programming model design, runtime systems, and performance tools. And uh, last couple of years, we started looking at scalable deep learning. Um, but today, I'll be focusing on mostly performance tools. <clears throat> and uh, in terms of collaborations, um, so if you don't know where Turkey is, <laughs> this red region is Turkey. And then uh, uh, I, uh, I mean, we, we have active and uh, finished co completed collaborations with these uh, blue uh, regions, um, you know, some industry partners, some universities, some research centers, um, but uh, currently mostly focusing on Europe because of our um, joint uh, uh, project. Okay, so this is the one uh, Julian was talking about, ERC uh, funding I received recently. It's uh, uh, to develop um, uh, programming models for beyond more architectures, mostly focusing on heterogeneous uh, 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 systems, uh, how we can uh, uh, leverage um, multi-GPU, multi-IPU, multi-FPGA programming. Uh, basic ideas without involvement of the host uh, CPU. And, uh, and then uh, the other project is the Sparsity uh, project. It's an optimization and co-design framework for sparse computation. And I'm the coordinator in this project. Uh, it's uh, uh, six partners. Uh, total budget is uh, 2.6 million euros. Of course, it's split between partners. And um, so we are uh, developing um, uh, sparse algorithms and uh, software tools for sparse computation, including sparse tensors, uh, graphs. Um, and uh, uh, Koch University, where I'm, I'm located, is the coordinator. There is uh, another university from Turkey, NMU from Germany, uh, similar from Norway and GraphCore. It's a... Um, uh, AI chip company uh, uh, based in UK. <clears throat> we are collaborating with them as well. And an NSC ID from uh, Portugal. So GraphCore, uh, their IPUs, I don't know if you had a chance to program them. They are very different than 
um, NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, they are a box synchronous based programming model they use. And, um, but uh, they are, they're pretty fast. So we are um, porting some codes to GraphCore IPUs at the moment uh, in this project. So the target applications in the sparse computation, uh, sparsity project is, uh, we are looking at uh, heart uh, cardiac stimulation, uh, social network analysis, uh, epistatist detection um, in bioinformatics and then pedestrian tracking on autonomous cars. Uh, my group is particularly particularly focusing on pedestrian tracking in autonomous cars. We are collaborating with the com computer vision group at Coach. Um, and uh, it, there's a multi-object tracking um, application that uh, we are uh, currently porting it to IPUs. Okay, so, uh, so ERC project and the Sparsity project, uh, they are, they recently started, so I don't have much to report about them. So maybe next time I'll report on those more. Uh, but uh, today I'll be focusing on this uh, the funding I received from the Royal Society, uh, British Royal Society. It's diagnostic tools for uh, communication pathologies. Uh, so this project has been active for more than a year, almost one and a half years. Um, so in this project, we're uh, developing uh, some profiling tools based on event sampling. Event sampling is um, a hardware feature uh, available um, in commodity CPUs, and it's very lightweight because it uses sampling. Um, and it's also very precise, accurate, because it uh, you can... Uh, trace back the sample to the instruction it triggers it. So I'll be talking about com detective tool uh, that we developed. Uh, it's a communication detection tool for threads. And then briefly, I'll talk about reuse tracker, which is um, it uses the same method, but for a different purpose. Um, it's a reuse distance analysis tool. And then uh, while developing these tools, we realized that AMD and Intel has uh, have very different design for uh, event sampling. And we will, um, uh, we uh, recently wrote a paper uh, comparing AMD versus Intel for uh, event sampling and, and it's currently under uh, review. But if you would like to know more about it, um, you can send me an email. Um, um, I can uh, share the, uh, the uh, <coughs> paper with you. Okay, so um, why we need communication tools, uh, why, why we needed to develop Com Detective. Um, if you uh, program um, supercomputers, uh, you probably use MPI or OpenMP uh, for parallelization. Uh, MPI, there, there are tools for MPI to uh, monitor its um, communication. Uh, so here you're seeing a matrix of communication. So what this means is in the x-axis, you have the uh, ranks, uh, MPI ranks, and then in the y-axis, you have uh, MPI ranks as well. So a uh, darker color indicates that these two ranks communicate a lot, like let's say 10 and 19, they communicated a lot. But if the, the white regions, that means there is no message exchange between these uh, processors. And this can be useful um, for uh, various reasons, which I will talk soon. Um, but there was nothing similar uh, for uh, inter-thread communication. So there are many tools for process um, uh, level, uh, inter-process communication, but there was no uh, inter-thread communication uh, tool that can generate these matrices. So that's what we did. Uh, we developed um, uh, a tool that detects inter-thread communication. And this is <clears throat> uh, the communication matrix for the same application, but using threads this time. As you see, there are a lot more communication going on when you use threads. And um, the, so here, for example, nearest neighbor communication, these are a little distant communication, or uh, this is master uh, thread uh, communicating with the uh, remaining um, threads. So why do tag inter-thread communication? Uh, we can identify possible sources of performance bottlenecks. Um, by the way, I don't see the participants if they raise hands, so um, you can just uh, uh, speak. 
up if you if you have questions uh, so far i didn't ask so far if you have questions but you can interrupt me anytime oh farzad is here as well so thank you guys oh john shelf is here sorry i, I just noticed the uh, people join uh, Okay, so I'll continue. Um, so uh, we can also uh, guide performance optimization, like you can do thread pinning. Uh, we are currently working on, actually on thread pinning, where you pin the threads based on this inter-thread communication. You can do data structure modifications, or uh, you can also eliminate uh, false sharing uh, based on this inter-thread communication. <clears throat> So, what are the challenges when you come when it, it's MPI? Um, uh, the communication is straightforward because it's a very explicit. Uh, you send a message, you receive a message, and you and then you know how many bytes transfer. But if you want to uh, detect inter-thread communication, it um, you need to intercept load and stores. And um, if you uh, intercept all of the loads and stores, this introduces a lot of overhead, um, and it can delete the uh, execution, uh, and then you may change the program behavior. And, <clears throat> and then uh, the, this should scale as you increase the number of threads, how, how you solve this problem. So we developed a, a com detective. Uh, which is accurate. We validated against several benchmarks uh, we developed and uh, HPC benchmarks. It's very lightweight compared to alternatives. It introduced 30% time and space overhead. It's sampling based, uh, so it doesn't require any software changes like kernel changes or additional hardware. Uh, it just uses uh, uh, PMUs uh, in the hardware, and it can differentiate communication as true and false sharing. So I'll explain what this is, um, this true and false sharing in a second. And then it can attribute communication to objects, uh, data objects. Like you can say that um, which objects in the program communicates the most. We can tell you these are the top communicator uh, data structures uh, in, in your code, and it's open source. You can download it from this link. So what is inter-thread communication? So this is very basic um, uh, explanation. So uh, if you don't understand anything from the rest of the code, I think you, uh, I mean, rest of the slides, you sh I think you, you, you will be able to understand this, this couple of slides. So um, when, um, a thread um, accesses data. Let's say we have thread zero in CPU zero and thread one in CPU one. When a thread accesses <clears throat> data in memory, we bring this cache line, this red cache line into the cache, okay? Even though it accesses this green uh, data point, we bring the entire cache line. And then another thread accesses the same cache, same data that's green, uh, data point, um, it won't be served from memory. It will the, the transfer will happen from the other cache because it's uh, closer. So this cache line will be transferred to this CPU. So we refer to this as true sharing because they exactly access the same location. Thread zero access this green uh, location. Thread one access this green location. But there is also false sharing. In the false sharing, if thread one accesses a different location in the same cache line, but these two locations happen to lie in the same cache line, again, we have the cache line transfer, but this is false sharing because actually they don't share the exact data point, but they share um, the same cache line uh, that uh, they access uh, different locations in the same cache line. So when we generate communication matrices, we can actually separate them into uh, the entire communication metrics and a true sharing metrics and a false sharing metrics. So this is the very first tool uh, that uh, differentiates true sharing from uh, false sharing um, between these two uh, matrices. So, if you look at the existing tools, um, uh, which we were able to find a couple, uh, one of them is Numalize. Uh, Numalize is, uh, it's actually overcounts uh, the number of uh, sharing or the, the number of um, communication. 
So amount of communication between threats normalized hugely overcomes because it doesn't have this uh, time notion. So it doesn't have, um, if you access once um, and much, much later, if you access that data again, which might be evicted a while back, it will count as a, a communication. But in fact, um, it's not a communication because that the second access is served from memory. So as you see, com detective and the ground truth are very close to each other. Um, <clears throat> and if you may uh, think that, uh, for example, uh, you, you have an expectation of if I have more sharing, I will have a, a proportional increase in the communication, but it's not true. Um, this is expected, the, uh, the red one, but uh, when you measure, it's actually much uh, below the expected value. Okay, the other um, problem with the existing tools is that um, they can introduce huge time and memory overheads. So we have looked at simulation-based and binary instrumentation-based alternatives and a compiler-assisted uh, instrumentations, and they can introduce 4x to 100x slow down it. It makes it impractical to use in, um, in real-life applications. Especially the memory uh, capacity limitation, uh, you may not even be able to run the tool because you don't have enough memory to uh, keep the logs, etc. And then the other issue with the existing tools is that they can be intrusive and then detecting uh, communication um, can require uh, OS uh, changes. Like you don't want to change your kernel to be able to detect communication, for example. Okay, uh, before I uh, talk about the design, like in, in internals of uh, Com Detective, is there any questions? Am I going too fast? I feel like I'm going too fast. Any questions? Oops. <laughs> I don't see so any. Uh, do we have any questions? So far, so good. <laughs> Okay, okay. So uh, if you look if you look at the design components of uh, PMUs, which is performance monitoring units, it's, these are special registers. They count the low level hardware events, um, such as loads and stores. So for each core, we have a PMU, um, and we also um, <clears throat> these PMUs can be configured to trigger. Um, interrupt for every n events, uh, and we will configure them. For example, some time intervals or sampling uh, intervals. Um, and then we also use debug register. That's the trick, uh, basically. Uh, so we uh, fill fill with the with the memory address and length uh, length of it. So this will uh, debug registers. There are four of them. Uh, in Intel and AMD uh, CPUs per core, they sense a trap when the memory region specified with the address and length is accessed. So if um, one of the addresses in the debug register is accessed, it will send a trap uh, uh, to, uh, uh, through a perf event. So the other uh, feature that we use is a part of the Linux kernel. Uh, this is a kind of a facility provided by the Linux kernel. It's a perf event. Allows user application to configure and access PMUs and debug registers. You can leave it without the perf event, but perf event really provides you easy access to PMUs and debug registers. And <clears throat> so uh, we can uh, both configure PMUs and debug registers with perf event. In addition to these, we write uh, we wrote a sample handler uh, which will um, get samples from PMUs and debug uh, PMUs, and uh, we keep a hash table we call it building board that publishes some of the sample data. Uh, why some of the sample data? Because we are. Uh, the hash table size, we keep it 128, but it seems it's sufficient. Um, larger um, hash table sizes doesn't provide any extra benefits. And then uh, uh, to handle the uh, debug register traps, we also have a trap handler. Um, and uh, let's uh, run a kind of a scenario. There is this uh, thread 
T0, we're running on core zero, and then T1 is running on core one. Let's say um, this uh, perf event is configured so that loads and stores to be sampled for every n events. <clears throat> and then let's say there's an interrupt happens in every uh, core zero after n uh, events, uh, occurrence of n events. And then we update um, the built-in board if there is no entry uh, related to this address. So what we do is we publish this address with timestamp, thread ID, and a memory address that causes the, uh, sorry. Um, that causes the um, interrupt. And then uh, some time later, there's an interrupt happen T1. Um, and then the triggered event is a store to memory address M1. So what we do is we search this hash table, whether this M1 appears in this table. Um, if, if it, the, the, if, sorry, not the address, but the cache line. So we check whether this cache line matches with the cache line already in the hash table. If there is a match, we also check the timestamp, whether it's expired or not. So we have two sampling period for the timestamp. If it, the entry is recent, then we say, okay, there is this cache line matches with this cache line. So there's a communication detected between T0 and T1, and we update our communication metrics. So if the the uh, the if this is not recent, we update uh, the entry with the new entry from T1. We release this, uh, delete this entry. So um, um, I can go more into details of COM detector, but this is one scenario of execution. There are, of course, several scenarios of execution. Um, but uh, so here um, are the snapshots of Parsec uh, benchmark matrices. Uh, for brevity, I only uh, show. I'm only showing six of them here. Um, so, as you see, for example, black shows there is no communication at all uh, detected. In the others, there's some uh, activities. These two, there are a lot of communication, but the others, there's not much. Um, interestingly, another uh, paper uh, actually uh, did inter uh, thread communication analysis for black shows, and they show very dense metrics showing a lot of communication. Um, in fact, we analyzed this code, Black Shows, which is financial analysis benchmark. And there is uh, literally no communication at all. So there shouldn't be any communication happening. Everyday thread works independently. So this um, the, the metrics generated uh, by the, the other work is uh, 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 quite uh, misleading, in fact. So uh, you may ask, where, where can I use, for example, uh, such a, um, a tool? Uh, we, we also show some use cases. One of them is uh, code refactoring. Um, so we can detect false sharing as well with ComDetective. And um, two benchmarks uh, from Parsec we did, uh, we uh, discovered that there's false sharing in stream cluster and fluid uh, dynamite. And both, um, uh, false sharings, they happen in the pthread library. Um, and uh, uh, they, their structure, pthread, mutex, and the condition variable structures, uh, they were um, uh, causing this uh, false sharing. And uh, when we uh, add padding to these data structures, we uh, immediately see 6% and 13% improvement uh, in both of these uh, applications. Okay. Um, Eden, can I ask a question? Yes, sure. So oh. if I wanted to incorporate pad in this way, yes, I guess number one, I would have to do that hardware specific. Um, and number two, is this sort of something that I can stick in a library somewhere? Or do I have to modify how all my data is stored myself? Um, so uh, it doesn't need to be hardware based because cache lines usually uh, it's the same uh, across hardware. This is really related to um, your, uh, your cache line size. It's 64 bytes. Uh, so it's um, it can be uh, more 
but typically it's 64 bytes, so it's safe to assume that's the case. Uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but also you can get the cache line from the system and then um, use that as a padding, uh, 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 like how, how much I need to pad you, the, that will give you an idea. But here in the library, we are doing the padding. So you don't need to change your application code because the source of post sharing was in the library. Mm -hmm. But it can be in your code. If it's in your code, you need to pad your data structure, your own, the data structure that you're using. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Um, other questions? So. <clears throat> no. Okay. So we um, kind of like this idea of the, you know, using uh, PMUs and debug registers uh, for um, communication monitoring. And then we, <clears throat> we thought about like where, where else we can utilize this uh, feature because um, uh, maybe I didn't stress enough, but this is really low overhead compared to alternatives. Um, we are talking about, you know, um, uh, 1.2, 3x uh, overhead compared to you know 40x, 100x slowdown when you use binary instrumentation or uh, compiler assist approaches, etc. So, and then we start looking at uh, reuse distance analysis. Um, so, reuse distance analysis is used in compilers <clears throat> for data locality. Uh, so, what is reuse distance? Um, in um, in short, uh, so let's say you have an access sequ sequence, A, B, C, D, 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 A, et cetera. So these are addresses in memory. So um, the reuse for A is five here. This is time uh, distance, um, but a unique uh, distance, reuse distance is three because D is accessed uh, twice and B is accessed twice. So the unique access are B, C, and D. So this is the reuse distance. You can um, you know, um, determine the, the cache size and do some um, uh, locality optimizations uh, based on reuse distance. And um, when you have multiple threads, um, there is also invalidation, concept of invalidation, which means <clears throat> here, uh, if there was one thread, um, you access A later, so you count it as reused. But if T2 access A in between, and T1 and T2, these threads are in different cores, then that is actually invalidation rather than reuse. So basically, Existing research only focused on single thread reuse distance analysis because uh, there are a lot of, you know, everything is multi-core now and we have multiple threads. So we focused on how we can extend this idea of reuse distance um, to multiple threads and multiple cores and shared caches as well, not just private caches. So, um, when we develop reuse tracker, we um, also looked at existing work um, in terms of time overhead, space overhead, um, inter-thread uh, profiling accuracy, primary method they use, uh, whether they can uh, do private caches and shared caches, and then whether they can detect cache line invalidation I just explained. And um, there are a number of tools uh, uh, developed uh, for reuse uh, distance analysis. And RDX is the, the latest one, but it was focusing on only single threads and private caches. So we um, uh, have, um, you know, we, we extended this uh, to shared caches and multi-threaded applications. And our overhead uh, this time is about 3x, um, and then but accuracy is pretty high still, 92%. <clears throat> but compared to uh, these al alternatives, um, the, um, the overhead can be very high. So um, in terms of reuse tracker, it has you know, low overhead. It's pretty accurate. Again, we validated against multiple ground routes. Um, I should also mention this accuracy. Uh, this is actually the most difficult part uh, when you develop profiling tools. Um, how do you measure its accuracy? Uh, 
because you need to have a ground truth to compare against and you can um, no, and not always you have the ground truth and uh, when we look at uh, in fact uh, the reason why we developed com detective because we started using numalize for one of our research and we realized that our um, uh, conclusions or results are very noisy we cannot get any conclusions because the reason was the profiling tool that we are using was inaccurate uh, it was giving us wrong data and then we couldn't make any sense out of that data and then we decided to develop our own tool but it took uh, more more than a year to get um, accurate uh, measurements uh, for the for the tool and um, uh, so it's again sampling based. Uh, we use PMUs and debug registers. <clears throat> and this is uh, designed for multiple uh, threads environments. So we can uh, profile resistance in private and shared caches. Um, and also we can detect cache line invalidations. Um, and um, one of the uh, 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 key features is also we, uh, we also go back to the code line. Uh, attribution. So uh, we can tell where the reuse happens in the source code. So it's not just, you know, we are not just dumping uh, some histograms for uh, reuse. And this is also open source. So you can download the tool here. And uh, in this link, we also provide all the benchmarks that we used and we developed uh, to um, get the accuracy, et cetera, for, for this uh, work. So. Um, so here is the accuracy verification and overhead uh, one of the benchmarks. So I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to show all of the uh, benchmarks. So based on these, we have 92% um, accuracy, and then we also run this on uh, 10 parsec benchmarks, and our overhead is uh, less than uh, 3% <coughs> for for the same uh, uh, so for the runtime and memory overheads. Okay, um, I guess I was uh, kind of quick. Um, so in summary, uh, ComDetective, it's an entire thread communication analysis tool. Uh, it can generate communication matrices and reuse distance, um, reuse tracker is a reuse distance analyzer tool for multi-threaded codes. And both tools are available um, under this link. And as I said, we recently submit um, a paper uh, comparing um, AMD versus Intel. So by the way, both tools, ComDetective and Reuse Tracker are available on Intel and AMD. We are um, uh, extending this work to ARM processors as well. Uh, uh, one um, undergrad student actually working on the ARM extension, ARM processor extension uh, for ComDetective. And uh, again, while we were uh, developing these tools, we realized that um, there's a very different behavior uh, uh, on Intel um, and AMD. Uh, their support for uh, PMUs uh, and precise event sampling. So we decided to write a paper um, on AMD versus Intel and their um, PMU designs and how um, a profiling tool can be affected, uh, their accuracy, uh, their overhead can be affected by uh, by their design choices uh, of the vendors. Uh, that's all uh, from me. Sorry, I uh, maybe I I talk too fast or maybe I didn't um, plan the full time. But I thought I should speak for forty five minutes, but it's forty minutes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any. Questions? Hi, so so Didum, um, uh, you know, you did this analysis, comparative analysis of um, uh, AMD and Intel, and yes. um, uh, and so if you were to give advice to them and also potentially to ARM about how to change their PMU designs to support uh -huh. better accuracy. Uh, we, we know from talking to them that that they they design performance counters not actually for the tool developers, but they actually do it for expediency for their internal testing. Uh -huh. uh, and so a lot of uh, ergonomic features are overlooked, um, but they are they do take input on that. Uh, what, what would be yeah. your recommendations? So, um, 
so and the documentation is a hell so it's it's pretty bad uh, so it's very detailed but it's so confusing so um intel they should look at intel's <laughs> you know as a as a uh, kind of uh, uh, so here is the thing we compared AMD versus Intel in terms of accuracy mm -hmm. I can tell Intel's accuracy is pretty good AMD is not so good because of their design choice they only support two sampling flavors but Intel uh, supports um, a specific uh, so you can say I want to I want to sample just loads I want to sample just stores mm -hmm. but um, AMD you just uh, sample the instructions, retard mm -hmm. instructions. So, and then you need to um, see whether that instruction is a load or store. So you you have to do a lot of samples to get the same accuracy on AMD. Mm -hmm. um, and then we compared overheads. Uh, so guess what? AMD's overhead is lower uh, compared to Intel. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and uh, we also compared their bias. They are equally biased if you... Um, uh, so if, if you try to do uh, sampling from different locations of the code, uh, you may get different results. Um, and we compared in terms of um, uh, kernel modules, whether you can sample in the kernel or in the user space, uh, kernel space or user space. So again, Intel is better in that uh, support. Um, what, what else? We compared seven, eight things. And um, uh, so we submitted an SC paper. We'll see if, and we, we, we are hoping that this will help ARM or RISC V uh, PMU designers, mm -hmm. uh, which design uh, to, you know, um, take advantage of, or uh, at least which design to um, get, 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 whether it's a good design or bad design. I, I don't want to say AMD is bad, but most of our results, Intel was superior, uh, honestly. So we wanted at least in one case, AMD is better. And that's uh, when, when it comes to the overhead. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, AMD has lower overhead. Yeah. Yeah. Farsa, do, do we even have like a PMU in the chip yard, the fire sim stuff? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Well, maybe maybe we can design a PMU together for Risk Five because we... yeah, that, that, that's uh, that's uh, that will be nice. So, uh, John, let me send you the paper. Yeah. We submit to uh, SC. We'll see. Uh, it will be nice to hear your feedback, and I can send it to Farzad if. if yeah, and are, are you going to be able to make it to ISC this year? So, um, uh, I'm that definitely count? here. I. Uh, should I come? I was debating with my husband yesterday. Like he he needs to take care of both kids when oh. I work. So. <laughs> and he's like, I I have a class on Wednesday and Thursday, okay. and I'm doing a final on Wednesday. That that's the yeah. Oh yeah, it could be hard. Um, okay, yeah. well you got to come next year because I'll be chair next year. It's in Hamburg, which is super cool. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. So you're going this year? Uh, I'm going this year because I'm deputy chair. Uh, okay okay. <laughs> Yeah, I may come then. Uh, they rejected our paper, so I'm a little. Yeah. <laughs> we, I we submitted a mixed precision paper, and they rejected, so I'm a little. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but it's fine. It's yeah. fine. I may come still. Uh, yeah. Nice to nice to uh, see um, you all here. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if you have any questions, but I will follow up with the the, the next paper. I didn't want to put. Um, those in these slides because it's yeah. under review. Oh, yeah. Anne is here. I didn't realize. Hi, Anne. <laughs> hey, Didim. Sorry, Hi. I'm on mute. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, it's like <laughs> all my uh, crew is here, so I'm, I'm I'm very happy to see you guys. This is your past. We're all here. Yeah, yeah, it's my past. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's uh, you know one of the kids is sleeping. The other one is uh, he. He came to the door, knocking the door. I don't know if you heard the thing, but, so, uh, yeah. Don't so, be sorry. My house is the same these days. Yeah. <laughs> it's evening, right? It's, it's almost nine here. So, uh, thank you, Julianne. It was very nice, the uh, series. Uh, I actually, it was, it was last week. I couldn't talk. I had a sore throat and my voice was gone. So I was afraid on Saturday, I thought about sending you an email. I was like, let's wait till Monday. Maybe I'll be fine. And then uh, my voice is back now. Yeah. 
Or, <laughs> well, that worked out well then. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for making the time and, and talking to us about your work. It's really interesting.